a lead actor in iconic movies such as Dancehall Queen, Third World Cup, The Lunatic and Shutters. Whether in film or on the stage or in reality, his life has been drama. But who is the man behind the cameras, beyond the stage and all those titles? Actor, author, artistic director, producer, entrepreneur. My guest is Paul Campbell. I am Archibald Gordon. And Welcome to Profile. Thank you so much for having me, man. Thank you. And thank you for joining us as well from overseas in the United States. Well, presently I'm a little bit uh, north. Uh, I'm in um, Toronto, Canada. In, in Toronto, okay. That's fantastic. Yeah. I know you are doing a lot of different kinds of projects, which is why you're in Toronto. So you are an actor, an author, an artistic director, a producer, an entrepreneur, so many different kinds of titles that we could add to that list. What do, you think is <laughs> <laughs> what do you think is responsible for your success? I, I think it's my uh, tenacity, my, my, my willing, uh, my mother uh, is always telling me, you know, um, you never give up. My mantra is the wheels until the wheels fall off. Uh, I've been very, a very stubborn kind of man, you know, when it comes to uh, getting what I want done. Uh, I never stop. So it, it's been that, a go-getter, some people call it. And it doesn't matter what goes down, I, I'm up again, as long as I'm able to get up. No. When people look or think, rather, about success, they sort of have a picture of what it looks like. And in many ways, your, upbring your upbringing, where you grew up, is not necessarily where they would start or where they would look. And this would have been Water Street in Kingston. Describe the community that you grew up with and, and, and um, those early days. In Kingston, um, where I grew up, I, I grew up in Kingston 13, uh, Maxfield Avenue. And um, I, uh, there were different... Uh, depressed ghetto communities. I, there was 63. I remember some time ago, I got someone asking me on Instagram, why am I not celebrating the ghetto that I come from? And uh, <clears throat> I, I asked him, which ghetto was this? And he was telling me this ghetto was uh, 63 Mountain View Avenue. You know, so I said, man, you have to make me know. You have to be specific. There are many ghettos that I've lived. You know, I've lived in Mountain View. I've lived uh, uh, Raytown, you know, uh, my early, my formative years. Um, that's where I went to school as well, at uh, St. Michael's Primary School, you know. But so I, I've done the, the, the Brighton Street, the Franklin Town, the Rollington Town, uh, to the Uptown. But this sense of what you call a ghetto or what people call an inner city is not sort of the view. What you grew up with is not sort of the view uh, that people have now of a ghetto, ghetto, which is this idea of it being a violent place. That's not how you grew up at all. It was a very different place then. Yes, the, the, the people were depressed. Yes, uh, the, the, the area looked depressed. Um, the, uh, everything about that place was depressed, depressing. And, um, but there were, the violence was never there. The violence wasn't a part of it. There was a lot of cursing, yes, as the tenement yard dictates, but uh, there was never that violence, you know, uh, people talking about burning up each other with acid and chopping up each other and that kind of barbaric behavior. It never existed as much, no. And at the center of keeping you focused on the future was your mother, as you said always telling you that the world is your oyster? What was she saying? Uh, my mother's thing was, Paul, the world is your oyster. Yes, you are born Jamaican, 
uh, which I'm very proud of, by the way, 110% Jamaican. But the thing is, the world is your oyster, so you never ever just think about Jamaica. It's the world at large, you know? And my mother was um, that kind of a woman who's always, oh, she made sure that we had all the encyclopedias in those days, you know, so we could travel. Even we, if we didn't take the plane, we could read and we could travel. No other places, no other cultures enrich our thinking, enrich our lives, even though we were, you know, physically in the, in the ghetto. So, you know, she did her way of sort of alleviating that kind of depression for us. And obviously did a good job. On your way, on your journey, your next step would have been to go to Kingston College. And there, they called you Sharky? Sharky. I was called Sharky. I was the guy who shark everything, wanted to get involved in everything. Uh, um, uh, how it actually happened is that we had a free kick in a football game. And uh, everyone was uh, deciding who should take the kick, who should take the kick. I couldn't bother anymore, so I just got in there, boop, and kicked the ball. Of course, I didn't score. After that, of course, Sharky. And it stayed with me forever. And at Kingston College, this is really where this life in theatre and drama began. How did you get involved in drama? Uh, King Kingston College was, um, for me, was uh, definitely a place of learning, a place of uh, knowing the world, uh, you know, becoming. Um, when I went to KC, uh, coming from where I did, uh, it was an opportunity for me to get to know other people, you know, uh, other different ways of living, uh, went to hang out with different guys, uh, knew different, different, different uh, ways uh, people I don't know. It's the uptown. It's the downtown. I was from the downtown and there were no table tennis boards in my neighborhood. So I had to go uptown to where my friend lived and I uh, used his table tennis board. And as an extension, got involved with people there. And so it, it, it Kingston College for me was, uh, man, Casey is my life, man. Everything about Kingston College, um, the teachers. You know, the teachers, Ms. Parchment, Ms. Mark, um, Johnson, Mr. Johnson, I mean, Wyatt Terps, every one of them, man. I mean, they were like, at that time, were like parents for me, you know, because they're, they're insistent on me getting, getting there and doing the homework and making sure you pass the test and that kind of thing. So uh, Kingston College for me was everything. And a big part of that was the involvement in drama itself. That is where you started to act. Yeah, I started, I, I, I got involved in the school's drama festival. I took part in a play called, uh, a Shakespearean play called Chanticleer. And uh, from that, I, I, I um, you know, I started getting the buzz. I, 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 I got, they, to, they talk about being bitten by the bug. Uh, that, that happened for me then. And uh, uh, it became a passion for me. It became something that I wanted to continue. Uh, and I joined other little, well, clubs that had uh, anything to do with drama societies. I'd be a part of that. And uh, my, my earliest uh, foray into the Jamaican scene, though, was through the LTM pantomime. That's how I first got involved um, on the scene. I. I I looked in the paper, I saw where they were having auditions for the pantomime, and I, I attended. And I was lucky enough to get a part. And it started snowballing from there. And I want to talk in our next segment about how it started to snowball. Because not only did you work on stage, but you also went to do film. And that's where we're headed in the next segment of Profile. My guest this evening is Paul Campbell. Stay with us, we're back after these messages.